good morning everyone today we are going to talk about the congenital heart diseases in adults <coughs> actually usually congenital heart diseases usually seen in the pediatric age most of the cases almost 70 to 80% of the cases what we are seeing congenital heart disease usually to be diagnosed in the pediatric age group only <coughs> few conditions escape from the pediatric age because it is usually it is asymptomatic okay usually it is not recognized by routine routine checkups in the at school age during these cases only they will come to the adult life otherwise what we are seeing at present is the usually there will be some <coughs> surgeries has been done in the pediatric age group for the congenital heart diseases like uh, uh, TOF now what we are seeing is the corrected TOF okay or whether there is a there may be transposition of a great arteries what we usually usually corrected transposition of great arteries <coughs> okay what we are seeing now is the these cases already some operations has been done they finished the pediatric age group they entered the adult life that case is what we are seeing now most of the cases otherwise the rest of the cases which are usually now asymptomatic and not picked up by the school age that what we are seeing in the adult life that's why only few conditions will teach in this only three conditions means coectation of iota asd and vst these three are the most commonly we see we commonly seen in the routine practice that we will go in detail this is the normal <coughs> figure of a heart left side is the which is a complicated easiest thing is it just it is a square diagram easy to understand and easy to draw that is why we return the both the right side is the left atrium and the left ventricle left atrium will be usually drained by pulmonary veins left ventricle gives rise to iota so left side receive, receives the oxygenated blood right atrium receives the blood from the superior vena cava inferior vena cava and it will pump the blood from the right atrium to the blood pump to the right ventricle from right ventricle it is pumped to the pulmonary artery through the pulmonary artery going to the lungs then it comes once again through the pulmonary vein oxygen blood enters into the left atrium this is a routine physiology of a normal art this you have read since first year <coughs> first we will talk about the coactation of iota what is this coactation of iota it is a localized narrowing of a iotic arch just distal to a origin of a left subclavian artery okay means what it is just a small band like a thickening will be there in the iota distal to a subclavian artery usually what will happen usually these cases if it is a very severe constriction usually they present in the pediatric age group and they will be seen by a pediatrician if there is a moderate obstruction or if it is not severe obstructions usually they will come into the adult life what we are seeing is a just the patient presented with the symptoms or signs of otherwise on routine evaluation will found a hypertension at a younger age group this so this is one of a cause of your secondary hypertension okay that's what we are seeing so next time this is what exactly is thing that one star mark is there no one small star mark is in the descending iota that is where exactly this coactation is there this everything on one, one everything is marked no 1 2 3 4 5 6 these are all what are all the symptoms i'll go one by one this one is what usually bicuspid aortic wall means what usually in the coactation of iota around 50% of the cases there will be a bicuspid 
aortic wall that is what is mentioned in the one this sec two and three is what because of the coarctation there will be increased blood volume and the pressure in the aortic aorta art of aorta art of aorta and as well as in the descending aorta so there will be that is what it has been mentioned in the two right both in ascending aorta and descending aorta there will be cystic arterial hypertension is there <coughs> this four what it mentioned this four is usually there will be ventricular hypertrophy left ventricular hypertrophy because of the pressure overload as well as pressure overload there will be left ventricular hypertrophy later it leads to even left ventricular diastolic as well as systolic dysfunction it will happen this five is what is the these are the origin of the coronary artery this six is the origin of your coronary artery sorry carotid artery this five is the coronary artery what will happen <coughs> because the increased pressure in the both in the coronary as well as in the carotid artery there will be early atherosclerosis in these two sites that's what they have mentioned right coming to the symptoms and signs i told already everything all the symptoms and everything depends upon the how much is the coarctation if it is severe obstruction they usually present in the earlier infancy very severe is present in the either in infancy or pediatric age group okay and then usually they <coughs> they present for the cardiac failure and they will be detected in the early childhood um, so that's what i told if the cardiac failure does not occur in infancy there is usually no symptoms until the hypertension produces the left ventricular failure <coughs> then what will happen then there will be strong arterial pulsations we can see in the neck as well as in the supra sternal notch usually what will happen aortic coarctation is there hypertension usually will be present in the upper limbs okay because it usually present usually distal to a left subclavian artery so there will be hypertension present in the arms but usually in the legs there will be either normal or low blood pressure then usually the difference is exacerbated means what usually after exercise the upper limb blood pressure increases the lower limb blood pressure decreases that's what is called as exacerbated by exercise so when you are palpating a pulse usually the femoral pulse as well as the dorsal pedis and palpitation it will be weak and there will be delayed conduction of a pulse so if we auscultate what will happen there will be a continuous murmur both in the in the as a supra scapular as well as well as in the midline and the back midline and the back and over the left anterior chest may be present it everything depends upon the how much is the obstruction how much is the collaterals if there is a too much collaterals are there then you can hear the all continuous murmur all over the scapular region usually what <coughs> sometimes this coarctation is associated with the your turner syndrome that is your chromosomal x0 abnormality it will be associated with the webber neck if it turner syndrome may be present in these few patients then okay suppose uh, sometimes what will happen these patients usually sometimes if it is not detected in the early adulthood also usually they are presented with the uh, just like a your cardiac failure if you can, means all the signs of cardiac failure will be there if you are examine blood pressure will be high and examine there will be continuous murmur like that they will present otherwise sometimes they will present with what they will be they will present with all your cerebrovascular accident like hemorrhage cva they will present in that way these are also a few presentations 
then coming to the ECG and chest x-ray anything is there <coughs> ECG is showing a left ventricular hypertrophy will be there your x-ray if you take x-ray there will be a rib notching why there is a rib notching because as we as we when when you are uh, dealing with the uh, x-rays what we what we are told usually all your arteries in the chest usually go just below the ribs right that's why there will be because of the increase of pressure in the intercostal arteries there will be rib notching we can see in the chest x-ray then what we shall we can see is the <coughs> figure of three sign what is that figure of c three sign usually there will be a in the coarctation region and the post stenotic dilatation of a descending aorta that what we are seeing that notch is because of a representing a coarctation site coming to a treatment usually <coughs> if the when we will treat is if the demonstrated peak gradient more than 20 mm of hg should be considered for intervention especially it is considered if there is a evidence of your collateral blood vessels what are the interventions we will see usually what we will do we will do a resection of a at the coarctation side that is usually surgery open surgery now everything is not everything is you are not opening only what we are doing just if it is just percutaneous intervention we will do what we will do we will do percutaneous intervention procedure as a endovascular stenting we will do you can always ask whether if post procedure suppose we have done a correction for your coarctation post procedure the patient will be a patient will be uh, what we can post procedure whether the hypertension will go off most of the patients still that is 25 to 40 percent of the patients usually the hypertension will keep on persisting why there is a few explanation for this one why this hypertension doesn't go even after coarctation because once during this coarctation there will be a permanent and continuous stimulation of a these renin angio system has been stimulated even after correction it will be stimulated even after correction so usually there will be no reduction in the blood pressure even after the correction of our, uh, your coarctation that's what is called that's one of the expression they are giving so even after the correction the continuous of blood pressure means because they will be continuously activated all this angiotensin is most of the activity is uh, this angiotensin renin mechanism so patient will usually continues to be having a continue to having a rise blood pressure especially in 25 to 30 percent of a patients next coming to a your ASD what is this ASD is what is this ASD? ASD is a just a sorry. What is this ASD? ASD it is a atrial septal defect. Means what? There is a small defect will be there in the inter atrial septum. Usually, because of the left atrial pressure more than the right atrial pressure, usually the flow of blood is there from the left atrium to the right atrium. That's what we have shown right what is happening here the blood from the left atrium receiving a blood from the pulmonary vein we will tell x and y this y part this is oxygenated blood is mixing it towards the deoxygenated blood in the 
right atrium that's what we depicted as a small y right so in the right atrium there will be usually volume overload will happen in the right atrium so this volume overload in the right atrium will happen as well as the pressure volume pressure increases so this will go towards the right ventricle then through the right ventricle same there will be volume overload in the pulmonary arteries through the pulmonary arteries once again go receives the go to the lungs through the lungs it once again come back to the pulmonary vein is oxygenated blood you can see small dotted in the small curved dotted lines in the right atrium as well as the right ventricle what it suggests is the right atrial enlargement as well as the right ventricular enlargement and the hypertrophy has been happening in a EST that is what is mentioned in the small dotted lines in the both in the right atrium as well as in the right ventricle that is what is depicted same pathophysically what I told normally oxygen blood from the high pressure left atria shunts into left atrium shunts into the right atrium increases the RV output and a pulmonary blood flow in children the degree of shunting across these defects may be quite large pulmonary to systemic blood flow is 3 is to 1 and so as the RV complaints worsens from the chronic volume overload the RA pressure may rise and the degree of left to right shunting may decreases over time eventually if the right atrial pressure exceeds a left atrium the shunt may reverse and may be primarily right to left if this happens what will happen cyanosis will appears everything all these shunts everything over the flow it happens everything depends upon the <coughs> major factor of the direction of flow is this complex reverses in the respective atrial chambers and the size of the atrial septum everything all this depends upon the size of the defect of the ASTs what is this Eisen mangrization <coughs> what is this Eisen mangrization as the pulmonary pressure elevated in most of the patients due to a high pulmonary blood flow okay, or because of a severe pulmonary hypertension there will be a reversal of blood flow from the right atrium to the left this is called as what is called as Eisenmenger physiology this is usually very unusual this is actually unusual in patient with ASD only seen in 15 percent of the patients in the ASD alone so increased pulmonary vascular resistance and the pulmonary hypertension secondary to pulmonary vascular disease rarely occur in the childhood or in the young adult life in the septum secondum defect is a septum I'll let you later but is more common in the primum defects this is same thing uh, means uh, this slide shows that one there will be hard way failure one thing is amount of the blood flow it is 1.5 to 1 left to right chains the same thing has been depicted by in the adult season how much is the blood flow by QP by QS QP is the how much is the pulmonary blood flow is going QS is the how much is the systemic blood flow is showing at the, at the original shunt uh, ASD usually predisposes to atrial fibrillation and uh, sometimes there will be cryptogenic stroke that is what is called as uh, what is happening paradox right to left right to left emboli is going through a that ASD that's we call as presenting it as a cryptogenic stroke these are one of the few manifestations what are the types of ASDs are there uh, how many types of there is there we will go one by one the most common type is septum secondum type of AST okay and the septum secondum type of AST then comes the septum primum type of AST then comes the sinus venosis then comes the coronary sinus AST this septum uh, usually most common thing I told is the most common is the almost 80 percent of the cases we will see ostium secundum or septum secundum type of ASD usually it will be asymptomatic okay usually most of the semi asymptomatic it doesn't produce 
any symptoms so usually these patients will be coming to the adult life what we are detecting is the, is the most common type what we see these ostium primum usually where is this ostium primum usually it is present in the lower part of the septum usually what will happen usually this ostium primum type of ASD usually it is associated with the cleft in the either in the mitral or in the tricuspid wall sometimes it is associated with the ventricular septal defect right coming to the sinus venous defects I told sinus venous defect what is the sinus venous defect sinus venous defect is what it is usually the same ASD it is usually present in the upper part of the your atrial septum what will happen sometimes there will be during embryonic age there will be that where exactly the superior vena cava and inferior going to join there exactly the problem is in the septum so usually what will happen this in venous defect usually this associated with the anomalous connection of a even the right upper pulmonary vein also this sinus venous problem then coming to the coronary sinus type of VST is usually comparatively rare it is basically a unroofed coronary sinus that results in a shunting from a left atrium to the coronary sinus and then to the right atrium symptoms and signs symptoms and signs I told everything symptoms is based upon the your size of a septum as well as the development of a isomangerization and the depends upon the how much is your RV uh, how much is the RV pressures as well as the pulmonary pressures everything symptoms and signs that's why usually small and moderate ASDs as well as the patent formula ovals usually are asymptomatic usually asymptomatic so usually they come to the adult life just picked up as a just accident because patient present with something else and as routine auscultation you picked up picked up a this ASD as a fixed wide split of a second zone so you undergo an echo you get confirmation that it is a ASD with uh, if the patient is having a large ASD usually they will present it as a present as a dyspnea and exertion or there may be heart failure may develop usually they will develop usually around 4th to 5th decade of life or later you can see the prominent RV and the pulmonary artery pulsations ok we can, we can able to visible and, and palpable also there might be so that's what I told usually S2 will be widely split and a fixed means what is that fixed means what usually the second action usually varies with the respiration but it is doesn't varying with the respiration that's why it's called as fixed fixed with the that one coming to the ECG what changes will be there in the ECG ECG we can see the right axis deviation we can see or there may be complete or a incomplete RBBB we can able to see in a ECG coming to a chest x-ray chest x-ray source uh, very large pulmonary artery and the increase of pulmonary vascularity and there will be enlargement of a right atrium and a right ventricle and a small aortic knob can be present how to diagnose is this is to usually diagnosed by trans thoracic 2d echo but if you want to know complete evaluation of a this septum and if you want to know about the if you are planning for any intervention for this ESD then it is better to undergo trans esophageal echo because this trans esophageal echo is there no you can able to make out the complete anatomy of the this septum we can modify you can see what is whether the rim is there rim is there for the plan for intervention for ESD 
then coming to the treatment aspects usually small atrial lesions liver normal life so there is no intervention suppose the large stents we have to treat when to treat large stents closure of a left to right shin is greater than 1.5 is to 1 should be treated usually either by open surgery or it is a through a percutaneous device based upon the anatomy of the septum that is decided by your transesophageal echo or anything like, anything like that if there is a PO force what is this PO force this is the patent foramil ovalis sometimes these are the responsible for your paradoxical emboli paradoxical means what usually be the be flow of blood from the left to right and these are the causes for your cryptogenic stroke if you can't able to identify cause of a stroke in a old patient only we can see able is the pfos these are the patient taken for the interventions and get a closed Anything else is there in this one? EST. Mm. Nothing else is there. Coming to a your VST. What is sorry? What is this VST? What is this VST? It is a ventricular septal defect. It is a usually most com common congenital anomaly recognized at birth. But they account for only 10% of congenital diseases in adults. Because usually there is a very high rate of spontaneous closure of a small VST during a early Life's early early years of life, usually larger VSTs okay, can cause the symptoms of heart failure and a poor somatic growth. Okay, and most often they present in adult life. Usually they be closed. Sometimes present in the adult life. Otherwise, sometimes if it is very large enough, they will be closed in the in the childhood. In the diagram also, they, we have shown the same thing. There will be a septum defect in the ventricular septum. They usually there will be blood flowing from flow from the left ventricle to a right ventricle from high pressure to a left <coughs> high pressure in the left ventricle to a low pressure in the right ventricle. Pulmonary artery receives the very huge volume. It will go into the pulmonary vein. Okay, through the pulmonary coming to the left atrium then come to the left ventricle here we can see in the AST there will be right atrial and the right ventricular hypertrophy and enlargement will be there but in these VSTs there will be left atrial enlargement you can see and the left ventricular enlargement you can able to see and as we, as we know because the patient with the left ventricular because of the very huge differences in the pressure the chances of getting a recurrent infections in the lungs are very very high if the defect is very large then coming to the types of the VSTs how many types of VSTs are there four types of VSTs are there and then the most common is the membranous VST usually where it is located is usually in the membranous part of a septum it is also called as perimembranous or outlet type of VST then com coming to the muscular type of VST usually these are the most common thing which is usually present in a adult life okay this is often leads to more of pressure and a flow restriction but uh, usually there will be no significant hemodynamic consequences will happen so usually these people usually asymptomatic 
so they will come into adult life without any uh, without any surgeries or without any interventions in a childhood but these atrioventricular canal type of bsds or we also we also tell it is a inlet type of bsds usually it is lo located at the crux of a heart okay crux of a heart usually this will be associated with a abdominality of a atrioventricular wall leaflets right then comes to your sub pulmonary defects what is this sub pulmonary defects usually these are also called as conal septal defects means what usually present in the at the valvular region sub valvular region okay usually associated with the prolapse of a prolapse of the right coronary cusp and the aortic insufficiency they will present uh, the outcome of the adults with a small vst without evidence of ventricular dilation primary is generally excellent what we are telling means what i told everything all this how they will present whether they will present with the, all patients will present no everything depends upon the size of the vst usually small size of vst they will never present only the larger defect then they will only present how to uh, grade the vsts means what in the mitosinosis no we will tell uh, how to grade this vsts like a small like in the mitosinosis we will tell it is a mild moderate severe like that vst we also will tell grade based upon the sizes by comparison with the aortic root size okay small or restricted vst will tell if it is less than 25% of a aortic root diameter moderately restricted vst will tell if it is a 25 to 70% of the aortic root diameter size is there unrestricted vst if it is greater than 75% of the aortic diameter is there then another method is there this vst size can also be quantitated based upon the blood flow in the left to right shunt restrictive lesions usually less than we'll tell it is less than 1.5 to 1 based upon the qp by qs ratio moderately restrict to vst if it is 1.5 is to 2.2 is to 1 1.5 to 2.2 is to 1 means what all this systemic flow is 1 but this pulmonary blood flow is 1.5 to 2.2 unrestrictive lesions means what if the blood flow is more than 2.2 in the pulmonary flow and 1 in the systemic what are the symptoms and signs we will get in a vst it is always depends upon the size of the defect and the presence or absence of rv outflow obstructions or there is a increase in peripheral vascularization everything depends upon these three small shunts are usually if it is an auscultation if you hearing is very loud murmur don't think that patient is having a very large vst very unlikely small shunts usually they produce a very harsh and very loud murmurs usually in the left and second third and the fourth intercostal space along the sternum large stents may create both lv as well as the rv volume and the pressure overload if pulmonary hypertension occurs high pressure pulmonary volume regurgitation may result right heart failure symptoms and signs may be present at a later age cyanosis usually they develop from if the patient is having a right to left shunt okay means one patient is developing a eisen mangerization that is the what is being what we can see in the ecg and usually ecg will be normal in most of the things otherwise there will be we can see either biventricular left ventricular element or a, in this patient especially we can see a biventricular enlargement we can see chances is more it always depends upon the whether is what is the size of the device as well as the size of the 
pulmonary pulmonary ventricular resistance is there with the large stents okay we can see lv as well as la and the pulmonary arteries are enlarged and the pulmonary vascular is increased that we what you can see in the chest x rays then what is the treatment Usually, what I told, small VSTs have a normal life expectancies. Only thing is, these patients won't have a not going for any LV failure or biventricular failure. So, they'll be doing a lot under type. Except only there there will be small risk of infective endocarditis will be there. So, usually in these patients VST, there'll be antibiotic prophylaxis whenever they're doing a. I told what are all the risk factors for your infective endocarditis. In this one, we have to give in this patient VST also. Uh, with uh, usually with large stents, usually there will be chances of going for heart failure in the early life. But if it is a moderate, there will be survival beyond 40 years is very unlikely. So these patients you have to go for intervention. So these are all the one of the few criteria where we have to take for the medical management or a surgical management based upon the few guidelines. ACC means American American AH is American Arcosation. This is American Cardiology hmm. ah, this ACC and AH both are same. Actually, AH is American Association, ACC is American Chest College, American Chest College Patients Guidelines for a Treating a VST. Medical management with the usually um, palm vasodilator therapy it means endothelial receptor blockers will give is appropriate for adults with EST and a severe pulmonary hypertension. Means for VST, if already patient is having severe pulmonary hypertension, we will treat medically with the Pulmonary vasodilator, pulmonary vasodilator therapy, especially with the endothelial receptor blockers, we will give. But surgical closure is indicated if the left to right shunt ratio is greater than 2 or if there is a any clinical evidence of LV overload. In addition, closure is recommended if there is been a history of a infective endocarditis. Means what any PSTs does more than 2 or 1.5 to 2 if a patient is of infective endocarditis always you have to go for a surgical closure uh, surgical management closure is also reasonable if the left to right shunt is greater than 1.5 and pulmonary systolic pressure or a pulmonary vascular resistance is less than two thirds of the systemic values or both Closure is also reasonable if the shunt ratio is greater than 1.5 with the evidence of a LV dysfunction. So, it is also reasonable with the closure if it is more than 1.5 with the evidence of a LV dysfunction. Then you can always go for, I told, what is surgical repair they will do? Usually, this is a very less risk procedures, okay. But Unless there is, it is a very less question. Usually, percutane suggests they will do. Usually, if patient is not having a significant isomerism physiology, non-surgical closure of a muscular VST has been approved more than the membrane VST with just being implantation devices. Then coming to your I think this VST is over. I think it is there today. Then coming to uh, and this is what is called as uh, medications. Means what you can think of. Actually, this was should be a first slide of your my talk. Especially whenever the patient is having a pregnancy, when the patient comes for the preconception counseling, we have to look for the few drugs which may cause this congenital heart disease. There are few drugs which has been 
having a teratogenic potential like your AC inhibitors, ERBs and endothelial receptor blockers. These are the drugs which are to be stopped in the, when the patient comes for the preconceptional counseling or if the <coughs> once the patient is started and become pregnant, the chance of getting a congenital or disease are very very high. Then this slide shows these are all the underlying heart diseases where pregnancy is contraindicated. These are the conditions, okay, adult conditions where pregnancy is contraindicated. These are the conditions like if the patient is having a pulmonary arterial hypertension, if the patient is having a severe left ventricular dysfunction or if the patient is having a patient having a previous peripartum cardiomyopathy is there in the previous pregnancy with the continuing residual impairment of a left ventricular function or if the patient is having a severe mitral stenosis or if the patient is having a <coughs> Marfan syndrome with the aortic has been dilated more than 45 millimeter or if the aortic dilatation is there more than 50 millimeter in a bicuspid aortic valve or if the patient is having a native severe AR these are the conditions where pregnancy is contraindicated these are the adult lesions where pregnancy is contraindicated thank you uh, the questions are in this the questions especially in this is are only thing is you write completely about the ASDs, VSDs and the coarctation of IATA. You describe that these three in a separate as a 5 mass question and send as a assignments to the mail within 3 days. Thank you.